Trina. And I'm Melissa. And welcome to Niches Get Stitches. We're sisters crafting just outside of Washington, D.C. We're knitting, embroidering, crocheting, sewing, and house projects. We started this blog mostly because we just want to tell you about it. <laughs> Not for really any other reason. One of the things we want to focus on is how to craft cheaply. A lot of times we feel like we've been in the stores where you have to have a ton of money to spend on stuff to be able to craft and that life just isn't for us. Uh, we try and upcycle a lot and we really want to help y'all figure out how to upcycle too. Or save for that big project that you want to make. Sales are a beautiful thing. Yeah, so if you want to follow us on social media on Twitter at Niches, because Niches Get Stitches was too long, we'll be posting sales from all of our favorite crafters that, you know, whether it be from Joann's, because some of the people who live in smaller towns only have access to big stores like Joann's, or from places that are internet only. Uh, so follow us there if you want to get tips on which stores are having sales that week, and then you can also follow us on Instagram at Niches Get Stitches, YouTube, at Niches Get Stitches, and I think that's all I've created. Ravelry. Oh, Ravelry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the knitter. I'm not familiar with the Ravelry. Yeah, so we also have a Ravelry site called Niches Get Stitches. Well, we have a forum called Niches Get Stitches if you'd like to follow us along at there as well. Cool. So, Melissa, why did you want to craft to start with? What got you into crafting? Oh, so... My best friend started knitting in North Carolina, and at the time I was living in Texas, and I wanted something to bond with her over the phone. Mm. And so she started knitting and so I was like, well, gosh, I better, I better go go learn how to knit. Now, was this pre-smartphone? <laughs> this was, no, I guess it was in 2004, 2005. Okay, so you could share your photos. We could share, our, right? right, we could share our photos, we could text each other, share what we were doing, she could volunteer to make me a hat that I never received. <laughs> Follow through on your projects, y'all. There's nothing worse than just having a project after a project lying around your house, especially when you live in a tiny one. And so, um, and she actually stopped knitting, but I loved it. It solved all of my anxiety issues, and so <laughs> I just kept going, and she stopped. And so, what, Trina, what made you want to start knitting? Or, knitting, you're not knitting. What made you want to start crafting? So I was always really, always really into sewing. I thought it would be super cool to be able to make your own clothes. And a lot of the clothes that I, the clothes that I want to wear, weren't for sale at mar at chain stores. Which is, we grew up in a tiny town, Black Creek, North Carolina. What up? Uh, it's got like 600 people in it. So our only real store was Walmart. Walmart was just, you know, like just not selling the things that I wanted to wear. So I did a lot of shopping at Goodwill. I never really learned how to sew, though these curtains behind you, which we'll show you in a minute, I did sew. Uh, I haven't learned how to sew yet. It is something I really want to do. I've taken a couple classes, but they're kind of expensive. And that was, it wasn't pre-YouTube, but it was pre like all those people on YouTube versus YouTube just being filled with like meme videos. And so I took a couple classes and I've learned how to sew a handful of stuff. I can do like some straight lines. Past the sewing, I've always seen embroidery things, and I just thought it's so cool that you can like take anything and turn it into embroidery. And so that's what I did, or that's what I'm learning to do. I've only had four or five projects so far, but I'm just taking things that I see and turning them into embroidery projects, and it's really fun. The only not fun part about it is that I don't necessarily want it to decorate my house. I want it to decorate someone else's home. <laughs> so every time I see something that I want to make, I think, who can I give this to? Because I only have so uh, we only have so much wall space here. It's true. It's true. Speaking of things behind us, do we want to introduce our friend? You may have met Craftus already on the internet, but here he is in his full reality. You can see how tall he is. I wasn't lying about him being nearly six foot tall. Uh, so Melissa and I made this together. I don't know, these copper pipes in the back? Uh, the bottom of them is not so cute, so initially I wanted something big that would cover up the pipes but also sort of still add them as like a detail of the house. So I asked Melissa if she would make me this delicious cactus and I asked, I love him. We love him. He's so great. Like he doesn't look as ridiculous as he looks to you because he's just so much fun. Uh, his do you want to talk about his body? Yeah, sure. So his body was knit. Um, this is Lion Thick and Quick. It took me about two days to make his body. It wasn't very long at all, I don't feel like. Um, and it's just 22 stitches in the round in brioche. 
just knit, 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 knit till he was six feet tall. Yeah, she did say she had bruises. <laughs> <laughs> after all the knitting because it was so big well because big needles and I tend to push with my finger and then yeah so, big needles sorry about that it's okay they were very sharp and then um his arms same thing 22 and I did add some German short rows in here so that he would have legit elbows and not have like the double elbow yeah and then his body his this body is just three inch PVC pipe no filling whatsoever his little dome is a little bit of filling but just like honestly, like the tallest little handful. <laughs> and then his arms have some feelings. So he's squishy. He gives good hugs. I've heard. Uh, I haven't yet to hug him. I hugged him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his needles we put on latch hook style. I have a pom pom maker and I just wrapped white yarn around it and then cut them all in half and didn't actually pom pom them. And then I just stuck them on latch hook style, which didn't take as long as I thought it would. I thought it would take forever, but it did not. His face is made out of felt, uh, just Velcro and hot glue to glue all those pieces together. And uh, yeah, so the pom poms that did not make them, they were bought in Mexico. Uh, but I love them so much. I went to Sayulita to visit a friend, and I came back with, I wish I was just kidding, like $100 of the pom poms. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I want to make pom poms all the time. With a lot of spare yarn for pom poms. Yeah, my second project ever was embroidery pom poms because I was like, I need to do it! So, the holiday season, we make pizzelles for everyone. And for our neighbors, I made pom pom, like, for the box that I put all the pizzelles in. Because I was like, I want to make pom poms! I just love them. They're so stinking cute. And I'm like, <laughs> She currently has plans to decorate the entire home in pom poms. Yeah. yeah. Any baby in my life will get, like, a pom pom mobile. Like, I just. I love it. I love them. It's a good, but it's a good use of all the leftover yarn we have. Yeah. It's easy for, yeah, any scraps you have, uh, colors that you, that maybe someone gives to you, like if you, someone bought you yarn and you're like, thanks so much. And you're like, what am I going to do with this yarn? You feel bad giving it away. <laughs> Turn it into a pom-pom. Just get crazy with it. And like, they, uh, you can like make pom-pom patterns. I saw online where they made fruit shapes out of pom-poms. What? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it, and as soon as we have that color spare yarn, I'm going to make them. Well, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, it should be good. So, moving on, what what is it that you love about crafting? Part of the thing that you'll see when I show off my knitting today during our FOs and, and whips section is that I give away almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep almost none of my own knitting. I, I love giving somebody giving somebody something that I spent much of my time focusing on them and thinking about them. It's kind of like a meditation to me, mm. and so there's love in those stitches, and and whether they realize it or not, I, I love giving them something like that. Okay, okay. Uh, most of the crafts I've made have been for the house. Uh, so I bought this house back, in, back three years ago, I think, you know, and... It just, I just didn't have that much stuff. I was living in a basement apartment, and when I moved here, I felt like it needed so much stuff. And so I've slowly crafted some stuff. I've slowly just easily, like, repaired stuff with, a, like, a slap of paint. Or even we, I redid our kitchen cabinets in contact paper because they're that Ikea laminate, and I was like, ah, I don't know if the paint's going to stick, so I just risked it and did it with contact paper. And they look so good! I like, I'm shocked every day I see them, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I'm really pumped about these cabinets. They're incredible. <laughs> so, a lot of it came from that, and then two years ago, our mom really wanted cookies for Christmas, but instead of just saying that, she called it crafting Christmas, and all of us were forced to craft everyone every gift. Uh, our little sister Bridget went overboard and made the most amazing stuff. She made us lip balm, she made us a candle, she made me these uh, like dip painted uh, kitchen utensils that I hung up on the wall. What else did she make? Oh, she, made, uh, she did like a tin stamp for the candle. She like put our little initial on a heart and tied it around the candle. Uh, she made us lotion, like girl went banana. She was like, oh, Pinterest says I can craft this. Boom, I made it. <laughs> It was amazing. It was a true story. Although, I will tell you that Trina's present was extremely personal and thoughtful. So, Trina made us those Russian nesting dolls. And, um, 
And she had one for each of the family members, including the spouses, and, and she hand painted them and made them so personal to each person. I thought that they were amazing. And when they lined up, you know, Daddy was the biggest one, and then Mommy, and then Melissa, and her boyfriend, Trina, and, and Alex, and Timmy, and his girlfriend, and, and Bridget, and Brooks. And so Bridget and Brooks's were only like this big, and she still painted them to look so amazing. So Trina's gonna go grab her and Alex for you and show you how she made her and Alex. I just, I find them to be so incredible. Yeah, so this is my husband. Uh, he's, a, he's a little, just a little guy. And for all of them, I tried to put them in outfits that I visually saw them in. And then I also painted like their thing on them. So Alex loves to dance. And so I put a little music note on them. I don't know if you can see it. I'll zoom in. We're doing this on a non-front-facing camera, so we really have no idea what we're showing y'all. <laughs> and then this is me. Uh, back when I had super short hair, even though it doesn't matter, all of them got pretty short hair. Uh, but I love Philadelphia soft pretzels. We're, we're originally from Philly, and then we moved to this tiny town of 600 people. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I painted myself a little pretzel. Uh, I think I put nineels on yours. You did, yeah. On you my did. brother, he's welding, and so I put a little welder on his. And Tim was also, our brother Tim was synonymous for wearing a shoestring belt all the time. <laughs> he has since stopped, but I painted a shoestring belt on him. My dad, I painted a ukulele. Anyway, yeah, it was a really fun crafting Christmas. And then Melissa, what did you, you made different gifts for everybody? I did. I did. I knitted a pot holder for Bridget. I. Um, I took up woodworking. Was that the one where you did the double-sided for the yes. first time? Yeah, that was, I did a double-sided, uh, pot holder with a clod on it for Bridget. Um, all the boys, because they love beer, I made them all the beer map, the beer cap maps out of wood. What, what map? What do you mean? North Carolina. So I cut out of a piece of plywood, I cut the map of North Carolina mm. out of a piece of plywood, and then I drilled, like, perfectly circled for the right size for the beer caps. Mm, okay. So that they could place their beer caps in the North Carolina map. Yeah, and then my mom saw it and she's like, I want one! <laughs> so she also got one. <laughs> oh, yeah, she what a nut, man. Uh, Tim. So Tim is actually, was that, oh, that, that was everything. Who else did you make? What else did you make? That was, like, I couldn't crochet at the time, so you wanted pot holders that were oranges, but I can't knit in a circle, so I asked somebody on Etsy to make your present instead, because <laughs> I couldn't crochet yet. And this is a true story. Uh, and that's, I can't even remember what I made Daddy. Probably cookies. I probably did make Daddy yeah, she cookies. She also made a crap load of cookies. She's the only one that made cookies. <laughs> I mean, that was the year I made raspberry thumbprints for the first time. That was bizarre. Yeah. Uh, and then she didn't even make me cookies. She went with so, me to our parents' house. Rude. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a, so that was a really exciting Christmas and I, I think going back, I had this big bold idea that I was going to make everyone terrariums, but like m themed after their favorite movie, but terrariums are kind of expensive to build because you got to like buy the fishbowl. <laughs> And then I also am excellent at murdering plants. Like, I killed all my succulents. I don't even know how. It's like, I think to myself, like, that looks, I'm thirsty, therefore plants are thirsty. But that's not the case with plants, apparently. So, no, yeah, so I, the same. yeah, so I'm really glad that I didn't do that because everyone's plants would be dead. <laughs> that was the year Bridget was going to make air plants, and then she killed all yeah, of her Yeah, she air, killed all of her air, air plants, too. Yeah, air yeah. plants. They just want air. Bridget killed them. Yeah. So, meh. Uh, yeah, I, uh, because I'm, I guess I, I love putting my house together, and that's why I was really, like, into the crafting. And then if I, once I learn to sew, I'll be really, I'll be really happy to, like, wear my own clothes and add pockets to all my dresses. What? Uh, I, whenever I see someone in this really unique outfit, because I've been following the sewing Reddit thread, I think to myself, I even say to them, I'm like, ooh, did you make that? And of course they're like, no. <laughs> I bought this at a store? What are you talking about? But I want someone to say that to me eventually. Did you make that? I'd be like, I sure do. I got it. I put it in pockets. So it should be, yeah, it should be fun. The embroidery is, it's fun for me. And I love seeing something kind of come to life in this crafted fashion. And I really like following everyone else on social media. Like some people are so creative and I just think that's so, um, that's so cool. It's, 
Like you just like pluck this idea out of the thin air and then you like turn it into this tangible thing and it's it's so beautiful the work that I've seen people do. I I think it was two years ago I was prepping for Lent and I was like, you're watching too much TV, Mintern. You need to do something else and give up TV for Lent. <laughs> I didn't follow through on that. <laughs> but what I did think is, well, if you did something while you were watching TV, then maybe you won't feel so much personal TV guilt for watching so much TV. And so talking to Melissa, she's like, well, I like to knit while I watch TV. And so I knit and I watch and I knit and I watch. And uh, so I was like, oh, well, maybe I can do that with embroidery. It's a little harder with embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to like physically look where that needle's coming and if you you know pull in the wrong spot then suddenly your whole work is messed up but i have been able to those like shows that are stupid that you watch because they're you're just like trying to get through them those are the shows that i've been embroidering through <laughs> uh and so yeah so i really like that i'm not just watching tv anymore and that i'm actually doing something constructive and creative and and exercising my brain and all that stuff that we have to worry about these days yeah yeah. No, I, I Netflix a lot. Ooh, Netflix! I'm into it! <laughs> um, I'm also a big, uh, I, I used to be a voracious reader. Now, now I knit, and so I can't hold a book and needles at the same time. So now, big fan of the Audible. I have a huge Audible library, and um, I just got much better at borrowing from the library. And... Library. 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 <laughs> um, Wednesday. <laughs> I just got much better at using the uh, online Audible feature for the library. Mm. Yeah, if you guys haven't downloaded Libby yet versus Overdrive, download Libby because Overdrive is garbage and Libby is so easy to use. True story. Much easier. Yeah. So, speaking of Netflix, what you watching? <laughs> I... I've been I've been booking it lately. What's your so, reading? Yeah, so uh, I had a I had a whole strain of like World War Two spy mm -hmm. craft novels. So I read the Alice Network and the Nightingale and the Lilac Girls, and the Lilac Girls was really poignant to me, and it and it it was very deep and emotional. I felt the book was, and so I needed something more garbage to read. <laughs> Follow that up with just to lighten it. It was my beach reading. It was a terrible choice yeah, for that's beach. A terrible beach. It was it's a it was a terrible beach read, but it was a wonderful book, and I I think that everybody should read it. I just needed something lighter after that, so now I'm reading. And since it's like starting to be fall, and I'm going to Salem, I started reading Nora Roberts' uh, Dark Witch. Why are you going to Salem? Oh, so uh, I'm going to uh, Amy Herzog's retreat, Make Rare Love. Amy Herzog. Oh my God, I've heard of her. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I don't know how this is happening. I don't know how this is my life. But I'm going to Na Amy Herzog's retreat, Make Wear Love, in Maine on Wednesday of this Tuesday, Thursday of this week. On Thursday of this week, since I have to go all the way up to Maine on my way back, I'm gonna stop in Salem because it should be very lovely in the I fall. I like Salem. It's silly, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go see all the witchy things. Witchy, witchy. Uh, that's cool, man. Uh, any shows right now that you would recommend that you've been watching? We'll have to come back to that. I have to think on it. That's fair. Fair. What about you? What are you, what are you watching? So I just murdered the hundred. I barreled through that, and that show was a lot. Uh, everyone I, a lot of people that I follow, friends and social media influencers together are all like, the hundred, it's so good. And I was like, okay, well, I'm done the show. Uh, that I had been watching, so I'll watch this hundred, and it had been on my list for ages, and I think season five had just come out on Netflix, and so I was like, okay, this is it, I'm gonna do it, and fortunately, it's one of those only, like, 12 episodes a season show, so I started watching it, and I was like, oh, this whole first season is, like, Lord of the Flies, like, all, which is my second favorite book, all these kids are, like, just trying to murder one another and be, like, the leader <laughs> on the island. The second season comes around, the adults finally show up, and so, like, the first two seasons, I'm like, yeah, okay, this show's pretty good, but then, like, honestly, like, people just keep getting murdered, and the premise <laughs> so is... don't get a death. <laughs> yeah, so the, the premise <laughs> is that uh, they send me... The, these people are living in space after a hundred-year war, or after a nuclear war, and after a hundred years, they send a hundred kids down to see if Earth is livable, because they're about to run out of oxygen on the spaceship. And it turns out that a ton of people survived the war, and yet these 
spacelings are coming back to Earth and being like, this is our Earth, we owed it. So it was like, real turtle, real world. It was like, no one's trying to work together and be like, let's find a common ground. They're right. just like, murder, murder, murder. Yeah, let's let's procreate and make more humanity. No, yeah, none, none, of none of that. None of that. They're like, oh, no. Anyway, yeah, so that show was heavy, and I honestly don't know that I'll keep watching it. But I will say, like, a few days after I finished watching it, I thought to myself, I wonder how the main character's doing. Like, anticipating the next season. So, Maybe. I don't know yet. If I were watching it live, if I were watching it, like, like every week, I definitely would have quit it by now. But binge-watching it is maybe okay. Well, together we're watching, I was going to say, together we're watching the new... Castle Rock? Castle Rock. Yeah, that's good. It is very, yeah, it's very good. And it's really good for the season. It's a good seasonal mm-hmm. show. Very, like, get you ready for Halloween kind of stuff. A little bit confusing. I'm not as good as Trina at watching, like, shows where you have to, like, know what's going on behind, behind, behind the scene. Trina's, she's very good at that kind of analysis. Well, that's because I'm watching. Melissa's <laughs> knitting. <laughs> Melissa's trying to knit by TV light. <laughs> and we don't have, we have a projector instead of a TV, so it's, like, soup. it's not great lighting. For doing anything else but watching TV. <laughs> and we do have uh, like craft lights that like sit over the spots that we have on the couch. But if they are on, you can't see the screen. <laughs> Especially if it's a super dark show like Castle Rock is. So I'm like, Melissa, you gotta turn the light off so that I can watch the show. And she's like, well, I'm knitting. So. <laughs> true. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I like shows like that. Like Westworld. I'm trying to think what the show I was watching before The 100 was. But it has left my brain. Probably wasn't that good. I really liked the new Anne with an E that came out. Mm. Yeah, the new season of Anne with an E. I love Anne. Of, I love all things Anne of Green Gables. It's. I, I feel like next year I'm going to Prince Edward Island just to go see all the Anne of Green Gables. Yeah, things. that sounds great. Uh, I am also pumped for uh, autumn, but I love it for scary stuff. I love Halloween. Halloween's my favorite holiday, hands down. Melissa's boyfriend, he also really likes scary movies, so I've been asking him for like, ooh, tell me about like some scary movies that you like. Because I, t- I tend to not w- watch movies. I like watch TV shows, and I don't have the, the attention span for movies anymore uh, because of binge watching, honestly, because like, the like peak in TV shows comes like at the half hour mark, whereas the like, movie comes at the hour mark, and so you're like, when am I going to get to the exciting part? <laughs> but like a TV show, it just keeps coming. Whereas in movies, I'm like... <sighs> like, this is so boring, like, oh, finally they're at it. So, I asked her boyfriend what shows he, uh, what movies he suggested, and I watched two of them. Because uh, I prefer thrillers over horror, so I want to, like, things to, like, be suspenseful, and, like, wonder what's going to happen next, not necessarily, like, blood and gore. Both movies that he recommended me were not suspenseful, because Netflix's categorizing module has, like, determined what is a thriller, and they're really bad at it. It's, they're not thriller <laughs> movies. Okay. They're just horror movies. I watched this one dumb one that was called Bullet Head, and it was essentially like Cujo, but, like, not scary. They were, they, it was, like, Adrian <laughs> Brody and scary. John Malkovich uh, in this, oh, and Rory Kieran, who was in another, oh, he was in Castle Rock, and I was like, is that Rory Culkin? I'm pretty sure that's, that's the Macaulay's brother, sort of it was, and then he showed up in this other bullet head movie, and I was like, oh, kid's getting work, good for him. But, yeah, they like, they get locked in this warehouse, and there's this this dog there, and he chases it. <laughs> and that was it, that was the story, it was so stupid. <laughs> I'm okay, so mad. that's not a recommendation. So don't watch that one. <laughs> Unrecommended. Yeah, no, nah, it's terrible. Uh, I also, so I don't, I, I don't listen, I can't listen to Reno, I'm not very good at it. I'll get super distracted by like what's the tracking about. So like they'll say something and then I'm like off in a memory somewhere. So I'm not good at listening to stuff, but I will read on my commute into work. And so I did read Nightingale and my, our little sister recommended it to us. And what she didn't tell us is how emotional it was. So I was like trying to finish it because I've already from the library and trying to finish it at work. And suddenly I'm like crying over my lunch. Because I was like, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I didn't know. Oh, man. Yeah. And then uh, I just finished. I also read the Alice Network on your recommendation. And then right now, because it was finally like not on a wait and I wanted to read more about it in detail, I'm reading The Magic of Tidying Up. Uh, we live in a very small house. It's like under a thousand square feet. And I'm constantly being like, we need more space. <laughs> <laughs> it's real stressful. 
Uh, our only, basement, only for Trina. Yeah, just for me. <laughs> our basement's like packed to the gills. Uh, I'm like trying to get rid of this furniture now that I love, but there's just no space down there. And I'm like, we need my space. So anyway, so yeah, so it's, it, for me, someone who is, who is like constantly, just like really, I'm really good at getting rid of stuff. I don't have a lot of emotional attachments to things. Uh, it's not that revolutionary for me, but I can see where for some people it would be. So, and then after that, I have a band called Uva, 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 Uva. That's next on the list. So, do you want to talk about some crafts? Yeah. So show us, show us what you've been working on. Okay, so I'll show you my very first project ever. Uh, it's this little. I love it. So, so I love hot air balloons, and so the first thing I wanted to do was a hot air balloon. And this one is from Follow the Bunny. Uh, I bought it on her Etsy shop. It was, I think, five bucks. I mean, she just sends you the pattern, you print it out, and you trace it. And uh, it's really cool because it lets you do. Can you hold this up? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, it lets you do like all different types of stuff. So these ones were all French knots and stem stitch, and this one is the ladder stitch. This one's the star, the lazy daisy, pinwheel. Anyway, so it was a really good project to start on because it really uh, helped me learn all the new, all the stitches that are common in in, in embroidery. Excuse me. And uh, and so it was really it was fun for me. The only thing is I don't know what to do with it. Like again, I'm not gonna hang it up in my house. So we'll see where it goes. Um, and then uh, the second one, the second project, I'm willing to show a photo because I don't have it here. Uh, but I made it for my friend's housewarming present, and it's the pom pom embroidery that I talked about earlier. And that one I copied from at Shafta Fims. Uh, honestly, I just searched pom-pom embroidery and hers was the first one that popped up. I copied it pretty much uh, stitch for stitch, but I did add Home Sweet Home in the corner. Uh, so I'll put up a picture of that one. Uh, the other one I did was for our cousins. Our cousins just got married. Jen and Vince, congratulations! Congratulations! And I copied a print out of this coloring book. Uh, so Woodland Coloring Book by Joe Taylor. I copied one of the designs out of here and decided on my own how to do the stitches and I would show you that one now too but it's at the frame shop getting framed for them so they can hang it up at their house because that's the that's the that's the crafting <laughs> rule at our house we craft it you take it away <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. yeah what about you um so I have um I just made I just made my first sweater so be forgiving um first sweater first sweater, first sweater. So uh, I finished this because I'm going to the retreat on Thursday. There's a fashion show, and so I didn't want to show up empty-handed, and I wanted to at least have made a sweater before I go to a sweater retreat. So this is um, this is morning coffee. It's a it's an Amy Herzog design, but I used a custom fit. She also runs a site called Custom Fit, and I used a custom fit mashup for morning coffee so that I could use. Uh, my gauge and my sizing versus the the one that was in the pattern. So it's got a moss stitch edging all around it. I used uh, Earth Unique worsted for the yarn, and so it made this like beautiful. I don't know if you can see it, but it made this beautiful ombre effect. But it's self striping yarn for your first sweater, so they don't all match, and that's okay with me because it was my first one. It's also got a beautiful detail right here for the moss stitch, just for right at the small of your back. It's really um, it's really lovely. It's got a lot of shaping in it, so it fits really lovely. Set in sleeves for your first sweater. And uh, I learned so much doing this project. It was such a joy to knit. And I thought, like, I was so prepared to be knitting this for the next, like, four months. It took me a month. It was, the, it was so fast. It went so fast. Um, and then I was addicted. So, so I'm also making a sweater for our younger sister, Bridget. And so this is the flax by Tin Can Knits, and um, it's all one piece, no seams, and I made this with a Sublime Eevee that I found on sale, uh, so they discontinued, I actually loved that yarn, and they discontinued it this year, and so on webs I was able to find it for like four dollars a skein. Hey, four dollars a skein, that's what's up. Yeah, so I bought enough of that yarn to make four sweaters, because <laughs> it was such a good deal and I loved it so much, because... I struggle with yarn that doesn't feel good in my hands. It has to be in my hands for so long that I um, I struggle with knitting with yarn that I don't think feels soft and lovely and warm. What experiences have you had knitting with terrible yarn? 
like when I knit with, um, so like he's knit in 100% acrylic, he's knit with the line brand Thick and Quick, which is totally the right yarn for this project because it's not something anybody's going to wear or anything. It just leaves my hands feeling kind of sticky mm. after a while, and I, I, I find that less, I find that happens less with natural fibers. So. Yeah. so, but finding a deal on natural fibers can be like an epic kind of search. So, <laughs> it's a true story. All right, so I was trying, well, I am not trying, I'm succeeding. I'm succeeding in teaching myself how to do Portuguese knitting. Um, but to me, the hardest part to teach yourself on any new kind of knitting, any kind of new knitting technique, right? So if you're a thrower or a picker, or I was learning how to do Portuguese knitting, um, is the change between when you knit and when you purl. So this is a seed stitch just so I could practice that technique uh, in the Portuguese knitting. And this was made with Malabrigos, Malabrigo Rios in, a, in an anniversary colorway so I love the way that it's coming out it's it's quite beautiful and uh, I like it very much and it was such a great learning experience the teaching the over teaching your muscle memory or overcoming your own muscle memory and mm. learning like a new technique for something was really was a lot of fun yeah I didn't mention the one whip I have in progress this working project here uh, so this is taken from a, an Instagram photo of Union Station at, in DC it's uh, Gordon, at Gordon Clow, C-K-L-A-U. Uh, this is my first work with Dimension. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. And I also bought this yarn. This is, this is sewing thread. I said yarn, but I meant <laughs> floss. I meant floss. <laughs> so this is, this is actually sewing thread. Uh, and I've been, the, I've been like quadrupling it or three strings like I've been like clumping it together to make these and it's been a real pain in the butt to work with um, <laughs> all these little dots will be French knots and like I have to like steadily like hold my thumb on each knot when I pull it through to make sure that the string doesn't get bent or caught or whatever it's a real garbage piece so I'll be glad to be done with this one even though <laughs> I love I love public transportation I'm super pumped about this piece uh, it's been a pain in the butt to do it's been, it'll be interesting for me to learn work with dimension because I don't know, that's, that's something I've always struggled with in any art project uh, on a piece of paper is just how to make it, that, how to give it that depth. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll be the Michelangelo of embroidery. I feel like he had amazing depth. <laughs> Uh, now, what projects do you have are TBCs, or no, are TB... TBCs, to be created? To be created? To be created. Yeah, like TBCs. It. TBCs. One of our segments is, uh, I thought we might call it Drop a Dime, Save a Dime. Mm. I wanted to talk about, oh, just a little bit about, like, choosing the right yarn for your project, and once you've chosen it how to afford it or put it into your budget to, to buy whatever it is. Because I, I do believe that I want to afford to craft, and so not all crafts need to be like the most expensive yarn in the world, but there are some projects that I think to myself, well, I want to use a really nice yarn because this is something that somebody will wear and cherish and care for. So, Shereen asked for a Fair Isle sweater, which I had to learn just so much. I had to take a steaking class. I took a steaking class with Franklin Habit, or cut your finished object in half. So <laughs> she doesn't ask for much, you guys. And so, um, but because I knew it would be like a very special kind of heirloom sweater, and Trina is very good about her clothes. She's very good at taking care of them and maintaining them. So if I make it correctly for her, I think that it's something she'll have for a long, long time. And I'm really so, pumped about it. Yeah. So I wanted to buy a nice yarn for it and so I had decided before I even found out that, it, that they discontinued it and it went on sale um, I had decided that I was gonna buy neighborhood fiber companies cobblestone worsted I found them and then I looked you know saw something on Ravelry and they had put it on sale for half price and they were completely wiped out except for the green that I needed which was amazing <laughs> so um, I went to the neighbor so I drove up to Baltimore because uh, again, we live right out east, right outside of DC. So I drove up to Baltimore and uh, and picked up the very last of their cobblestone worsted. This is Blueface Leicester. Like a, I'm not gonna say that. 
that sheet's name right. It's BFL and cashmere and silk and should uh, it should steep really well and it's the right color. This was very important to Trina. So this is hand dyed locally, made locally in Baltimore. Really stoked about it and I got it for half price. Yeah, all those things that people make you feel bad about, but like, oh, you knit with yarn from Joann's, like, yeah, bruh. Yeah. But this one is local, hand dyed, like she said, and she got the deal. So it's really important that you just pay attention to your local yarn stores. Right, and I called them, you know, and I was, you know, like, I need, I need all of your, this, um, this colorway is called Clintonville, which is a neighborhood in Baltimore, so it's named after mm. a neighborhood in Baltimore, but they were all out of white, and so just by talking to them over the phone, just like calling and talking to them, they found remnants of like a short release that they did of a different kind of yarn that they felt would go perfectly with it, and so then I just bought remnants for the white part of her sweater, so these are... This will someday, these two combined, will someday be Trina's Fair Isle sweater. <laughs> so, and it's living and it's very special. This is my sweater bag. My girlfriend made it for me in <laughs> Texas. <laughs> so there you go. That's a, that's what I have a, that is a to be created. Alright. I, uh, so I, again, we're from Philadelphia originally. And ever, I don't know, like, I can't remember when it started. Probably our dad used to paint these hex signs, which I'll talk about a little bit in a second, on tons of, honestly, garbage. Like, he wouldn't buy anything new to be able to paint these hex no signs. No canvases. Yeah, yeah, no canvases. He'd, like, paint them on the top of old paint lids, paint cam lids. He painted them on old cheese boxes. I don't know why we had those, but I'm sure he got them for free. Like, my dad wasn't going to spend money on this crap, but it was something he wanted to do. So he painted all these hex signs that he created, and he would get us to help paint him with him. And he entered one into our regional fair once and won first place. So that might be where it started, but the Pennsylvania Dutch text signs are just super cool because they have a lot of meaning behind them. They, you know, they talk about family and love and friendship and uh, good wealth along with uh, like wealth of farm. And then they're also, their colors are pretty primary, they're basic, so the colors just blend really well. And I, I just really like them. So we have this hideous banister in our house at the bottom of our stairs, and it's this, I don't, I don't even know, like this blonde wood color that doesn't match anything else in the house. Our house was, the person that we bought the house from, like, loved Pinterest, and they went Pinterest crazy all over the house. We have, like, mason jar lights, we have a dresser for a sink, it's, there's just so much. Anyway, so this is one of those things that they found and they put it at the bottom of our stairs and while it does its job at the bottom of the stairs it's hideous so I thought that I would and honestly this is probably the whole thing that kicked off me learning to embroider like actually like pushing me and driving me because I was like I want to do this project I can't find anything on Etsy that equals what I want and so I know I'm gonna have to make this myself and so what I'm gonna do is make four Pennsylvania Dutch hex signs all different all four ones to like bless the house and put them on this banister. So once they're all done, I'll share those pictures with you. I'm gonna make them out of mixed media. I'm gonna use felt. Uh, a lot of them are like leaf based because of the outside. And so I'll like cut the leaves out of felt and then stitch those on and and add any wording or stuff like that in the embroidery thread. So so that's the one project I have in mind right now. But obviously since I've done all of other projects since then it's not it's not the one that I like want to jump right into because <laughs> well, I want it to be good yeah you want it you want the practice you want the experience yeah. before you make the thing that you're that you're because all these are leaving the house so yeah. you want to make the thing that's going to stay in yeah, your house <laughs> so, I understand. yeah so to anyone who receives a gift from me just know I love you no matter what you think of my gift yeah, exactly. That's always the truth. I always tell people, it's homemade. You don't have to love it. But if you don't love it, give it back to me yeah. because it took me hours to make it. Melissa's first knit ever was for me. And, she, and it doesn't live here anymore. First, so first she calls me and she's like, hey, if I knitted you a sweater, would you wear it? And I said, uh, yeah, I mean, if it fit. And she said, if it fit. And I said, yeah. And then someone in her house in the background said, you asked if you knitted her a sweater. And she's like, I meant a scarf. And I was like, yes, of course I will wear a scarf. So she knits this scarf. And it was a beautiful scarf. But it was only like as thin as a tie. <laughs> and I was just like, I live in the Northeast. This is when Melissa lived in Texas. I was like, I live in the Northeast. Like, what am I going to do with this tie? 
<laughs> I would wear it. And I don't know, I don't know what it did do, but it also like curled all the way under. So it wasn't even like a tie width because it also like curled in onto itself. It was new, you guys. I mean, it was a great, she did great work, but I know I was never going to wear it. So after maybe the third time of moving it, I was like, this is going to the Goodwill. She has she has many other things that I've made her, so it's <laughs> yeah, fine she, now. She made me a headscarf. I wear that sucker every winter, so that thing is yeah. very nice. Uh, but yeah, it's... Our yeah. mom is the same way. I made... Mommy was like my second project ever, and I learned how to do cables on this intricate cable scarf that lives at Bridget's house now. My sister Bridget takes everything that I ever make and cherishes it forever. She's good at it. She yeah. looks, she's just like, you made this for me? Yeah. Yeah. She's the most knit-worthy person I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's because she's not knitting for... Bridget's also knitting, and she's, she's only been knitting for the last year. Yeah. Yeah, and, but she's also not knitting for herself. No, she everything, knows everybody else. Everything leaves the house. <laughs> but I still knit for Bridget, so my work still goes to Bridget's house. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so Bree's house, our sister Bridget, her house is very collected, and her house was very curated. And so I didn't want to just, like, whip something up for her and be like, here, I made this for you. And so I told her that. I was like, yeah, I almost made you this thing, but I hesitated because your house is so well put together. She's like, no, please, make me something. I would love it. So, yeah, so find that family member that will take all your stuff. Yeah. And give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> like our sister Bridget. <laughs> Craftus, did you want to add anything? You can't scare me with this Gestapo crap. Craftus, you're stupid. Get out of here. <laughs> you're so wild, man. So this was our first time. Yeah. We'd love, we would love to hear your feedback, um, anything you liked or didn't like. We really appreciate you guys watching and sharing this with us. We love doing this, and we love sharing it with you, and so we hope that you enjoyed it as well. Yeah, and we want you to share with us. If you have a project or you have an idea of an easy way to save money on yarn, or if you're just not sure about how to move forward on a project, like, we're not the best. We're not pros by any means. I, like I said, I've only done four or five of our projects so far. But I'm happy to, like, talk an idea through with you. Yeah. And be like, ah, I think this idea sounds great. And maybe you could do this stitch instead. So let us know what you liked, what you didn't like in the comments below. And if you want more ideas for a segment or less ideas for a segment, like, we're open to feedback. Again, we're really just doing this because... We like each other, and we want to talk about the stuff that we like doing. Let us know. Leave your comments. Follow us. Uh, let us know. We can't wait to see all of your works in progress and your finished objects. Please share them with us. Tag us in them. We'll see you guys next yeah. podcast. See you next. later, niches. See you later, niches. <laughs> <laughs>